you're a quara quara and you don't belong here you must go back to your country you move to south africa and you don't have any documentation your children cannot go to school and i was not gonna let my children die so i knew i had to find a safe refuge for you i would rather die of the war in the DRC. Getting documentation in South Africa is so hard. If you are a foreigner in South Africa, you do not have a green bar coded ID and you are not a citizen of the country. If you fall pregnant, you will have to pay almost 8,000 Rand if you're having natural birth and almost 12,000 Rand if you're having C-section. What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm Sister Makhalia Gaptis, go with Contagious Energies. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing below, turning on the notification bell so that you are notified every time we post a video. Firstly, I'd like to apologize that I have not posted any content for almost a month, I think. I was away, I took a short left, and my content took a short right. I thought I was gonna, you know, deliver on the content and be consistent, but where I went, it was just too much of a vibe for me to be like, oh, let me sit down and record a video. <laughs> what it's like growing up in South Africa, and why I feel like other foreigners should not move to South Africa. So a disclaimer, everything that I'm gonna be sharing in this video is based on my experience. Because without any further ado, let's get into the video. What was it like growing up in South Africa? As much as South Africa is a beautiful country, beautiful people, everything in South Africa is great being a foreigner in South Africa is the hardest thing for me I feel and if you think it was hard for me when I first came to South Africa because when I first came to South Africa I was like what six years old six yeah I was five five turning six okay um and i've been in south africa ever since i've lived in south africa for the longest of time so we came here and my father like i always mentioned in my video my father has a lot of kids <laughs> i don't know why i always put it out there but the struggle was real when i started grade one i remember i think we were paying like 50 rand a year i could be wrong but i do remember at some point in my primary school years i was paying 50 rand a year and with that 50 rand, my dad couldn't afford because he had other kids in different schools with me and my brother that went to the same school. And then I had my other siblings who went to different schools. I think I've mentioned it in one of my videos. I'm going to put the link up here so you guys can watch it if you're interested in that part of my family dynamic. Okay, so I went to school and in grade one, I obviously did not know the language. You know, I didn't know anything. All I knew was I needed to go to school in this country where I know nobody and I was very young. So obviously for me, it was easy to adapt to the language okay but i think my hardest thing about growing up in south africa i mean i cannot hide from it is the xenophobia like i experienced xenophobic attacks from a very young age um and i recently experienced it today but i will get into more uh, about it in the video okay so the first instance i remember okay so it did happen you know like from what grade three or whatever but the one that stuck with me my entire life until today was i was in grade five and my family obviously we came from i mean humble beginnings okay the humble of humbles um and i never used to take lunch to school because we couldn't afford it you know we were in a different country my father was trying to find these feeds he was trying to find work to you know to feed his entire family um and there were 11 us 11 of us at home including my parents right so it was a lot it was a lot for him so he did odd jobs he did whatever job he could get for no matter what price you know so i understand that some people are like oh but foreigners are doing you know accepting you know past minimum wage it's because we are really desperate okay we are living in a country where we don't know where to start even if you're a doctor in the drc and you come to south africa as a foreigner your doctorate does not mean anything you are just a regular folks like anyone else yeah. that's a situation that we found ourselves in and in grade five and i was in the feeding scheme line uh feeding scheme is a place where they give children who don't take lunch to school so i was in that line and this boy came up to me um yeah so when the queue and this boy came up to me he picked up my skirts and then he pulled me up the queue and he pushed me so i fell on the ground and he's like you're a quarter quarter and you don't belong here you must go back to your country you know the clothes you're wearing the food you're eating everything is privileged you know for you and whatever and i mean you know how school kids are everybody was in tears like everybody was like, ha, 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 ha. like i was the joke it, like it continued my mom is a congolese woman so a congolese woman you can spot her from a mile away so my mom would wear her you know ankara it's very bright she, you know she's very proud but every time she'd come to the school i would always wish she didn't have to because i knew as my mom meeting the principal or the teacher or whatever or bringing something that i forgot at home 
would be that everybody at the school would laugh at me that hey look at her you know she's different and she's a quarter quarter because that's what they called me you know i was teased for a lot of things in primary school i had acne you can only imagine they called me lunch bar my gaps people um called it the slot machine they were like oh we can go put coins and whatever you know the way i spoke people laughed at me and said i sounded like a man so i went through the most okay so even when now when i speak about what i love about south africa i'm speaking from a point of privilege because i've outgrown all those other things you know i can stand up for myself now i'm able to say no is no and if you say something to me you best believe i will come after you you understand so living like growing up in south africa obviously was hard because it was it's not my country you know even till today i always tell people like as much as South Africa is the only country I know, because I've been rejected so much, I myself, I'm just like, I don't want to say South Africa is, is my country because they don't even want me, you understand? And getting documentation in South Africa is so hard. A lot of people online make it seem as if you just click your finger and boom, you're, you're a citizen of South Africa, or you got a green bar coded ID, or you have a status. That is not true. I lived in South Africa. I think I got... Like I mentioned, I came to South Africa just after apartheid, so it was like 96, 95, 96, somewhere there, right? And then I got my green ID in 2015. 2015. From the 1990s to 2015, that is how long it took the South African government to be like, okay, you've been here long enough, God years an id and even with that it's not a thing of we just you know applied and received it no we applied and applied and applied and applied and then we ended up going to some lawyers and then the lawyers were like no you know you shouldn't have reapplied so the lawyers went to home affairs and fought our battles and that is how we got our our green barcoded id and we were like oh we got a green barcode id you know life is gonna change we'll be able to get the the same privileges that africans have it's a lie you don't have anything it's just that you move from going to home affairs every four years to never going to home affairs again honestly a green barcoded id for me did not give me any privilege or anything so for me personally people coming in south africa i just want you two guys to know you know foreigners coming to south africa i want you guys to know that Social media sells you a dream. Let me put it like that. The video I made about what I love as Africa, like I mentioned, it's coming from a point of privilege. It's coming from a point where now I'm like, I'm comfortable. Yes, you know, I can roam around because I got my papers. The police not going to stop me, you know, for nothing to say. Where's your gunda? So if you move to South Africa and you don't have any documentation, your children cannot go to school. I remember when we first moved to South Africa, we were able to go to school while my dad was still trying to figure out the whole um, Gunda thing, you know, the whole documentation thing. But right now, if you move to South Africa and you don't have documentation, your child will not go to school. If you fall pregnant, you will have to pay almost 8,000 Rand if you're having natural birth and almost 12,000 Rand if you're having C-section. With the fee, if you don't pay the amount that the hospital um, needs you to pay, and they're not asking you to pay the whole amount um, at once they actually say you can pay you can pay it in installments sorry you can pay it in installments but before your child goes to grade one you must have finished paying that amount or else your child will not be able to go to school so life is just not hard with regards to feeding your kids in this economy but also if you don't have documentation your children don't go to school and therefore that is when the petty crimes start because now you have to feed your children your children have to feed themselves and you know and whatever else you start doing jobs that you never thought you'd do prostitution is a thing you know and stuff of that sort so please don't let social media or the people who are living in south africa bluff you and tell you that moving to south africa or living in south africa is very easy because having a child you have to pay for the child then you have to maintain the child then you have to pay school fees for the child so life is extremely extremely difficult but with that said when I was young, I remember there was a point in my life, I went to my dad and I was just like, I don't understand. Why did you bring us here? Because for my dad, that was better life. And yes, now I can say, yes, you know, I have received, you know, the better life. But at the same, at that moment, you know, when I was going through all the teasing, the bullying, the whatever I was going through, you understand? To me, it was just like, I would rather die of the war in the drc then come here and be a laughing stock to everybody and everybody make me feel small you understand because for the longest time in south africa i had suppressed the person that i was i had 
you know, I always wanted to fit in. When I was with Congolese people, I wanted to fit in because even with them, they had rejected me because I've been here for so long. Like, you guys can hear from my accents. Like, I don't even sound Congolese. Like, even if, maybe when I speak Swahili, but I don't know. <laughs> you know, so even the, the, the Congolese community always felt like, oh, you're trying to act too South African. So they, like, rejected me. And then the South African people were like, you're not one of us. So I was, like, in between. So whenever I was with a specific group, I always tried my best to lean to that side and become a chameleon so that they don't see, you know, that that person is different or that one is different, you understand? And it's really hard because there are some experiences that I went through in my life that have affected me you know that have affected me that have affected the way i see certain people that have affected the way i do certain things you understand but for me personally if i had my own choice and i had not been here where i am and i was asked would you go back i honestly would rather go and get killed by the war and hunger in drc than come to south africa and relive the life that i lived growing up to be the woman that i am and yes i'm grateful for my father for persevering through everything you know for really trying his best because today i can honestly say i live a comfortable life and i'm happy with with everything but am i happy with the struggles that i have to go through the things that i went through to be the woman that i am today probably not i am sure i would have turned out amazing whichever way you understand so when you're moving from whatever country you understand because when you're moving from a country when you're moving from another country to become a foreigner in south africa you don't have anything you are running away from something so when you come to this country you're expecting it to give you shelter you're expecting it to give you you know some warm and love that you can't find in your country you are basically just coming to get medicine for your child you're trying to get you know make ends meet for your family but it's not going to be easy just because i made a video saying south africa is this amazing place the infrastructure is great there's no load shedding we have running water we have this we have that it does not mean that when you come here you're going to have access to those privileges it does not mean that so before you come i just feel like it's important for you to actually see that hey it's not a land of milk and honey it becomes a land of milk and honey once you have gone through the most okay because home affairs also rejects people like you can come in as you you can come in go to home affairs and home affairs accept it okay you are going to be a, a foreigner in our country two three years down the line maybe even four years you get rejected what happens then you have to go back to where you came from and how do you then pack your bags and go you understand because you've built something as much as it's not much as much as it's not great you have a system you know that okay if i do this job where they pay me 20 bucks a day i can go and buy a loaf of bread for my kids you know just to just so they can survive you understand but now with everything that's going on with the economy being so bad i mean i don't also want to say that stay where you are because it might be better than here no but where you are you know the language where you are you know the ins and outs of your country you know where you can find you know i don't know whatever you can find to make ends meet your family with the little that you have but imagine with this economy coming in south africa not just with the economy with everything that south africa is going through as the people you understand you know with everything that is happening with tudula with everything that's happening with xenophobia because those are things that you are going to experience Yes, maybe if you're a yellow bone, because I spoke to one of my friends and she was like, you know what, um, xenophobia is for dark-skinned people, you understand? Because she's light-skinned and she's never experienced xenophobia. So for me, it's like, I'm dark-skinned, I'm darker than most. And I've experienced it for a very long time in my life. So when you come, the chances are you're going to be dark-skinned. Even if you are light-skinned, you don't know the language. They ask you, what is this? What are you going to say? I don't even know it to this day. You get what I mean? So for me, I just don't want it to seem as if like, Oh, when people are sit on social media and be like, oh, South Africa is great. South Africa is this. Yes, South Africa is great. I don't want to take that away from it. South Africa is great. But is it great for somebody new coming to the country? The greatness that we see is not the same greatness that you will see. Like every other day you hear they shot this person, they burnt a foreigner, they did this, they did this. All that is trauma. All that is trauma for the kids that you're going to bring. Because like I mentioned, for me, I was like, oath to God. I was like, I would rather that bomb, bomb me, then be here and let kids 
mock you about where you came from you have no food you have no clothes you don't even want tomatoes oh i mean what kind of house did you live in you didn't even have a house you know did you you know did you play with lions and whatever like all the misconceptions that americans have about far about about south africa is the same that most South africans have about you know other foreign nationals so for me personally i mean i know i'm ranting a lot and probably don't make sense of most things but all i'm saying is that if i had to redo my life and i had a they asked me, would you want to be in South Africa at the age I came in? Definitely not. Right now, would I want a family member of mine or somebody I know to become a foreigner in South Africa? Definitely not. Because back then, if we struggled so much, not just because you had a lot of kids, but just because life was harder back then. Imagine now. Where do you start? Like, <laughs> like literally. Like, where do you start? Because... I went to the hospital uh, not so long ago. I think it was like three weeks ago. I went to the hospital um, and I was just smiling like a shesha I can't because that's what I do. It's my personality. I just smile for nothing. When I walk, I talk to myself. It's a thing. And then this nurse stops me and then she's like, what are you smiling at? And I'm like, I'm just grateful that I got the chance, you know, to see the day because a lot of people didn't get the chance. There are people in the hospital who are dying. There are funerals going on every day. So I'm really grateful. And then she's like, oh, okay. And then she asked me like, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, I'm from unit nine you know my battle unit nine she's like no where you from from ever so happy to tell oh i'm from the drc she changed her face why don't you go back to your country why don't you go back and smile in your country why are you smiling in other people's country mind you this is a nurse i was at a hospital going to get treatment so the first thing that clicked in my head is oh my lord i hope this nurse does not treat me because if she treats me lord only knows she could give me wrong medication. I'm not saying that they do it, but I'm just saying that was my biggest fear. If this nurse had to treat me, she would give me wrong medication. She would really feel, make me feel like the scum of the earth. And I don't want that. You understand? And I have been in South Africa for more than what, 24 years, 25 years? around there somewhere and till this day i still experience stuff like that you know and the other day i was you know uber and the, and the uber driver asked me the same thing and i was like are you dudula it was the first thing i asked are you dudula and he's like no i'm not i'm like okay i'm from the drc but i'm married south african then he's like you should always lead with that always if you're scared that somebody's gonna attack you or somebody's gonna make you feel a certain way always lead with the fact that hey i am Mary Stathican, but I'm Congolese. And I'm like, I don't want to live that life. I don't want to live a life where the first thing I have to throw in people's faces is like, I'm Mary South African guy. No, it should just be that I'm Congolese and that should be okay. I'm legal. You want to see my papers? My papers are here. Yeah, well and good. But even till this day, I still walk around in fear at my age. So imagine you bringing in other people, you know, here. I know this video is longer than I expected it to be, but this is just honestly like my honest truth. I just feel like don't let the the social media or the people you talk on the phone fool you because there are some people you are having conversations with them on the phone like oh, south africa is great but they are living the worst life ever you understand and you don't want to be not and you don't want to be that person if you want to move make sure you have your money you have a plan to say okay this and even if you have a plan the mere fact that you're coming to a place you've never been before the mere fact that you're coming to a place you don't even know the language you don't know east to west is still going to be difficult for you but i appreciate the life that i have i don't want to sound to make it sound like i'm ungrateful no i'm not ungrateful i am excited about the life i'm living right now but i just have some trauma from my childhood that i experienced you know because i was different you know and when it came to dating obviously i mean sorry when it comes to dating i can't really say because i've never had a lot of relationships in my life i've only had three relationships and you know the two showed me flames and now I'm married to my husband. So really, I can't really say this is how it's like and this is how it's not like for me. I just feel like because I've lived here for such a long time, I obviously have habits. I have South African habits, the way I talk, my expressions. So even dating was not really like a big deal, you know. And uh, somebody asked me, would you go back to your country? That is a tricky question because, like I mentioned, I've never been to the DRC. Like, my parents had me on their way to South Africa, so I've never seen, like, I'm obvious, I'm just Congolese by blood, 
honestly <laughs> i'm just congolese by blood i've never been to congo i've never stepped foot in in the drc i was i was born in zambia while my parents were on their way to south africa and before we lived in south africa we lived in zambia we lived in malawi and then we made our way um to south africa so to go back yes maybe if i had money and i want to go back and help and improve my country i would definitely go back but also it's a tricky situation because now i'm married south african so it would be unfair to be like okay you leave your country to go to mine you get what i mean but yeah otherwise it is a beautiful thing um, i've made really good friends i live well um so yeah i can't really say much but like i mentioned that it's a very difficult situation it's, it's difficult to explain because like the only part about living in south africa that i can actually talk about is the xenophobic side because otherwise things were good you know i mean i didn't choose to be here i know a lot of people like go back to the country but i didn't choose to be here my dad made the decision and you know he always said to me every time i went to him to complain about something he said to me that i know where we come from and i was not gonna let my children die so i knew i had to find a safe refuge for you and this is safe refuge and maybe now you don't see it but at some point in your life you're going to appreciate it and honestly to god i can safely say i do appreciate but I love South Africa, not just because I'm married South African, not just because um, of everything or I'm trying to get subscribers, anything like that. No, I genuinely like it because it's the only country I know. I don't know any other place. I know the corners of this country. If you had to take me back to DRC, I would not even know where to start. People in DRC would probably laugh at the way I speak because my Swahili is mixed with a lot of... Um, with a lot of... Uh, with a lot of English. But yeah, you know, I am a... I'm the girl. Oh, the girls. <laughs> okay, so firstly, I do like to apologize the fact that this video is so long. Secondly, the fact that I digressed so many times. And thirdly, thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Temahe, your gap to girl with the contagious energy. You already know what to do. Subscribe below, like this video, leave a comment in the comment section below, and I will see you in my next video.